Let us take in Shiva Shakti through five deep breaths. Om Shiva Shakti Om Om Shiva Shakti Om Shiva Shakti Om Om Shiva Shakti Om 
So we are moving on to the third shloka. Trayvedyam Pradyam Tripura Haramadyam Trinayanam Jata Bharodaram Chaladura Daharam Rudadharam Mahadevam Devam Mai Sadaya Bhavam Pashupatim Chidalambam Sambam Shiva Mati Vidambam Rudivaji So, this particular verse, even though the words are very simple, which anyone can understand, however, each adjective carries a lot of meaning behind it. That itself is a world in which one can contemplate, visualize, and go within. Trivedyam, that Pashupati is known through three Vedas, Ruk, Yajur, and Sama Veda. Trivedyam. Hridyam, one who is very pleasant and attractive to the heart of the devotees. Tripura Haram, one who destroyed all the three Puras, the three worlds. Adhyam, one who is primordial. He is the first one. Adhyam. Trinayanam, one who has three eyes. Jatabharodaram, he has long, heavy jata, the matted hair. Jaladuragaharam, one who has the moving snake as garland. Mrugadharam, one who holds mruga, that is the deer. Mahadevam, one who is. Lord of all lords, God of gods, Devam, one who is divine. Mai Sadaya Bhavam, one who has compassionate feeling towards me at all time. Pashupati, one who takes care of, one who protects. All living beings. Chidalambam, one who is the substratum of consciousness. Sambam, one who is with sa, that is Shakti. So, Sambam, his name itself is Samba, one who is always inseparable from Shakti. Shivamati, Shivam, one who is auspicious. Atividambam, one who entertains in different ways. Hriti Bhaje, I pray, I meditate upon him in my heart. So, now let us see each word. To achieve that Shivananda Lahari, which Shankaracharya stated in the previous shloka, how to get into the state of that Shivananda Lahari, the blissful conscious waves, how to experience it, how to get into that waves. For that, one has to Worship, bhaje. One has to go deep into it. 
So who is that Shiva? Trai Vedyam. One who is known by three Vedas. If we understand, Veda is like the encyclopedia in different dimensions, different levels. Not only about this world, it is the encyclopedia of Iha and Para and also the state of bridging between Iha and Para. So in different dimensions, Vedas give us the knowledge. It is like the encyclopedia. The very essence of Vedas is Shiva, the consciousness, Brahman. The very goal of Vedas is Shiva. The very process of gaining the knowledge of Vedas, that process itself is Shiva. So, Trai Vedya, one who can be known through Vedas. Another meaning is Trai is Triputis. Sharira Traya, Guna Traya, Avastha Traya, Trai. Vedya, one who knows. It is very true. It is the consciousness which knows. All the three triputis. Srishti, Sthiti, Laya. All the three are also known by none other than Shiva. He is consciousness. Hridhyam. He is very pleasant. And one who attracts the heart like magnet. Hridhyam. Is beautiful, Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. So, Hridyam. Here, we should see how delicate it is. Mano, Buddhi, both are not to the level of heart. Heart is much deeper. Whatever is attracted by mind, it is chanchala. It gets faded very soon because the mind is moving all the time. It is not sthira. It is not stable. So what is attracted to the mind will not stay forever. Intellect. What attracts the intellect makes that person to think, ponder, doubt, question. And it makes him go in the circle of the topic and he will be consumed in the topic. So it stays as the information in intellectual level. The data which is perceived and analyzed and is kept in the memory. That which attracts the heart, it goes much deeper and it stays permanently. That's the reason in India, in, even in day-to-day -day life, we say, did you get it by heart? I love you from the bottom of my heart. We do say these sentences, isn't it? I pray for you from the heart. You are always there in my heart. Heart. Why do you say so? Whatever a person takes into his heart, that means it is hridya. It is very pleasant, beautiful, and it sticks to the being and it becomes part of the whole being, Hridya. So, whatever we have perceived in the heart, automatically 
it goes into memory in a very deep level for example some of the songs poems which we would have learnt when we are young or which we have liked it a lot we don't have to memorize it it keeps coming out on the other hand even if we memorize it very well and if we have not put it to our heart if we have not liked it from the bottom of the heart that song that poem that matter topic will not stay in us permanently even that memory will fade up so hridyam a bhakta a genuine bhakta who has his heart filled with the thought of shiva shiva stays permanently hridyam because he is very pleasant beautiful he is very much close to the heart tripura haram tripura haram we know <clears throat> the three demons the sons of tarakasura tarakaksha vidyunmali and uh, kamalaksha these three demons they got the boon from brahma that the lokas of gold silver and iron which they built for themselves should be eternal so when it was made eternal there was one condition when all the three align together it will be destroyed so these three thought we will be roaming around in the whole manifestation happily only once in 1000 years maybe we will align together so who will be there by that time anyway let us also put one condition fine when we align it should be shot just with one shot it was taken and it was shiva who did that job when they aligned shiva with his just one agni he burnt all the three puras so if we analyze this and understand three puras are the three lokas which even all jeevatmas build and we roam around in those three worlds like jagrit swapna sushupti when we are in jagrit state the world is different when we are in swapna the world is totally different and in sushupti when we are in deep sleep even then the world is very different so and all the three are different and we are happily roaming in one after another in the same way guna triguna when we are in the world projected by rajoguna it is totally different when the mind is projected with sattva guna then the world experience is different in the same way tamo guna when that becomes highlighted the world i am enjoying or experiencing is totally different only when all the three gunas the three states align together automatically within a second nanosecond instantaneously the consciousness annihilates all the three worlds and just the consciousness shiva remains tripura hara isn't it when all the three align that is important so our goal should be towards aligning 
the triputis of different kinds should be aligned so that Shiva is shining like Deva from within for us to experience. Adhyam, who existed even before the creation, Adhyam, because the whole creation came from Shiva, the consciousness. It is the consciousness which gave birth to the mind. And it is that mind which created the universe. Adhyam, Trinayanam, one who has three eyes. That is Surya, Chandra and Agni. All the three take care of the well-being of the whole manifestation. So, he is Trinayana. Jata Bharo Dharam. Jata, it symbolizes the yogic power, the discipline of the yogi, wisdom. So, even to have Jata, a normal person, when he wants to get into that spiritual path, even to have Jata, there are so many prerequisites which he has to meet with. Only then he is given permission to have the jata. So Shiva has jata, which is bhara. That means he, it is very heavy. And udara, it is long as well. Long and heavy jata shows his yogi power. Because of that, his jata is very, very powerful. Through one strand of that jata, he is able to create so many rudras and bhairavas. What a power! Jata bharo dharam. Chala duraga haram. Uraga means the snake. Hara means the garland. Chalat, that which is moving around. That means snake represents jivatma as well as it is connected with poison. So, the minute snake goes around his neck as hara, as garland, its poisonous venom becomes powerless. It doesn't use it at all. It just stays as an ornament on him. And that too, it is enjoying the company of Shiva. Jivatma Puraga, like that, when Bhakta surrenders totally to Shiva, become part of the Shiva. Even then, the venomous poison, which is ignorance. Ignorance is the deadly poison which we are all carrying for so many janmas. The minute Bhakta becomes part of the Shiva, through keeping the Shiva in the heart. Naturally, all that ignorance will just annihilate. Chala duraga haram. So one should aim to become that uraga in the neck of Shiva. Close to Shiva. Mruga dharam. He is holding the deer in his hand. The deer represents the animal of fear which is always on its toes to defend itself. It is the fear which makes it to be on the toes. So, 
it is that dear to give it the rest to give it some solace shiva is holding it with lots of love and care in his hand who is the dear it is our mind mind is also called dear mind gets into the fits of fear because of losing something losing the assets losing one's life all these things come into picture only because of that duality which we are going through in this world so when we understand that shiva is holding my mind it is shiva who has filled my mind automatically the mind broadens and it becomes the whole universe and we know the whole world is within the mind so it is not afraid of losing anything because it knows everything is within that fear goes off when i realize that i am in the hands of shiva which is represented as the dear mruga mahadevam isn't it all devas all manifested deities and gods they all came into existence in the second circle which represents the projection of the mind because of the consciousness chit which is shiva and who is auspicious so mahadevam it is shiva who is the lord of all lords the god of all gods the deity of all deities because everything exists in that consciousness shiva everything everyone all gods came from that shiva the consciousness so he is mahadevam devam he is the one who is divine or species shiva mai sadaya bhavam and he has the feeling of compassion his emotion towards me is nothing but daya that is how the consciousness is ruling the whole universe compassion is the fundamental principle which ishwara is holding to carry on the duty of the world so daya 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 is the basic fundamental principle which is making the whole universe work with so much of unison harmony see how beautifully he is giving us the knowledge that one has to be daya maya because we are part of that shiva as we grow in our bhakti or in this spiritual path slowly gradually and automatically we realize that daya is entering our hearts and we become responsive to the happenings of the world and we are up readily to respond when it is needed pashupatim pashu 
Pashu is the one who is bound by the Pasha. Pasha is the nose. Pashupati, he is the Lord. Shiva is the Lord who is taking care of all the Pashu, all the living beings who are bound by the nose. Pashupati. So he is the one who is responsible, who is the one who is taking care. If we understand that, automatically the being becomes very cooperative to go in the path where that Pashupati is taking us. When we disconnect with that Pashupati and become the victim of that false eye and go away towards the world, we go through so much of struggle. So when we understand that I am Pashu in the hands of that Pashupati, there is chance for us to grow from Pashu to become the Nara and then Deva. For that also, Pashupati only guides us. Chidalambam. Shiva, the consciousness. He is the very substratum as consciousness. He is very much the substratum of consciousness. And further, it is this consciousness which is the substratum for mind and intellect and that ego to work in the uh, world as human being. Sambam, he is nothing but activated consciousness because Amba is always with him inseparably. They are together. So we are all experiencing Samba in day-to-day -day life, every moment, in all places. Samba. Shivam, one who is auspicious. Ati Vidamba. Vidamba has so many meaning to it. And rarely, very rarely we understand this, that Shiva is Ati Vidamba. What is it? Vidamba. It is imitation, distress, afflicting, interesting, strange, funny. Because of being very different from what we think it should be. It is opposite to that. Contrary. And it, he is entertaining also. He is entertainer. He comes in the garb of a jivatma and makes us go afflicted with the worldly pains, wonders, happiness, doubts, shanka. And he entertains the mind also by puzzling. Ati Vidambam. And it also looks like he is mocking at us. What he is, Nirguna Brahman, by taking the form as Saguna Brahman, that same Shiva, it looks as though he is entertaining the mind. That mind is nothing but Devi. So, he is Ati Vidamba. His way of entertaining, his way of tricking, his way of conducting himself in so many forms is so intricate that no one understands 
what the reality is, who he is, what he is. Ati Vidambam. Hridi Bhaje, again, I am not discussing about him or thinking about him, contemplating about him in my intellect or I am not fancifully give a thought about Shiva amidst all other thoughts connected with the worldly life. Now, I am having that Shiva in my Hridaya, that is heart in my Hridaya. Bhaje, I worship him, I adore him, I keep talking to him. Hridi Bhaje. So, this word Ati Vidamba gives us the secret. How the whole manifestation is nothing but Ati Vidamba. And it is the play of Shiva Shakti. The power of the Shiva. So, it is also giving us the cue that how to take the difficulties which we face different situations in this world also as Ati Vidamba. Then we are able to face the situations with ease. Lila. Sahasram Bhattante Jagati Vibudha Kshudra Phalada Namanye Svabneva Tadanu Sarnam Tadprita Phalam Hari Brahma Dinamapi Nikata Bhajama Sulabham Jiram Yache Shambho Shiva Tava Padam Bhoja Bhajanam In this verse, he is making us understand more about what this world is. Sahasram Vartante Jagati. In this world, there are thousands of Vibudha, Devatas, devotees, who are readily waiting with Kshudra Palada. Partial, very menial phala to give to the bhaktas. Namanye svapneva tadanu saranam. I don't even consider of following these devatas who are thousands in this jagat who are readily waiting to give the partial rewards. Not even in my swapna, not even in my dream. Tatkrita phalam and also the liking, the desire for the phala which they are ready to give because they are on parship. They are on trifle. Hari Brahma Dinam Api Nikata Bhajam Asulabham. Even Hari, Brahma and different deities who are all very close to you, Shiva, Nikata Bhajam, they are very close to you. Even for them, Asulabham, it is not possible. What is not possible? Praying at the feet of Shiva. Shiva Tava Padam Bhoja Bhajanam Asulabham. Even for Hari, Brahma, and other great gods, great powers, 
worshipping your feet is not available possible chiram yache shambho i beg for that reward from you all the time <laughs> Shankaracharya is very, very direct in telling or feeling, experiencing. And also he is expressing it beautifully so that all of us should be able to understand what he is saying. In the previous one, we understood Shiva, the consciousness, is the Brahman which is giving birth to the mind which is creating the manifestation in that manifested world there are so many devatas who are also manifested in that case all these devatas are capable of giving the phala which are also manifested phalas only and always the manifested when that adjective is there connected with anything it becomes partial so sahasram vartante jagati vibodha here vibodha it is not only deities it means vibodha also refers to uh, scholars highly informed panditas one who is with great wisdom the sages they are all good in giving the phala which is fine to lead the life in this world when we want to go beyond one has to go towards shiva the consciousness kshudra phala da that's what it means kshudra means it it is very low level kshudra why is it low level when compared to what shiva the consciousness or speciousness is readily giving is none other than the knowledge of what the self is what that parama atma is what that consciousness is so whatever these vibhudhas are giving us can only be a stepping stone to reach out to do the worship of shiva's feet and shiva through his feet he is able to give us the phala which we which is the very purpose of our human life which is atma gyana brahma gyana and moksha which is liberation from the worldly ties hari brahma dinam api निकटभाजामसुलभम सो मॉडर्न डे पीपल वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड ईच फैमिली इवन दो अवर नेबर्स आर वेरी गुड फ्रेंड्स बेस्ट फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम सो मेनी इयर्स वी आर ऑल टुगेदर वी लव वन अनदर वी डू वांट टू हेल्प वन अनदर बट आवर ओन फैमिली is so filled with busy life that we wouldn't even say hello to one another even though we are next doors the best friends aaptas if that is the case hari brahma are handling such great responsibilities as srishti and sthiti their hands are full <laughs> they can't even turn this side or that side 
so they are carrying on their duty even though they are very close to shiva so nikata bhajam asulabham even though they are very close to you it's not possible because after all even the designation what they are having as creator brahma preserver hari are also doing their job in a fixed way so they have the responsibility and they are connected with that so they are also becoming limited in that manner namanye swapne va tadanusaranam so in this case i am not ready even to follow them even in my swapna when we contemplate little more on this line it tells us the whole world is a projected or the manifested transient world so it is very much like swapna the dream in its value in its value if that is the case why will i give importance for something which is equivalent to a swapna in its value which is not eternal once i wake up once i understand that consciousness is the only eternal which matters all other things are transient and only a projected thing why will i give importance for that so i am not ready to even praise them and go behind them to give me that kshudha phala which is partial which is limited to this world chiram yache i always beg always i beg that means it is possible to beg only when it is so strong in my mind i want i want so with that i want i want i want shiva o oh shiva worshiping your feet yache i beg you all the time my mind is fixed on you so when we look at this shloka from different aspect why is shiva put on the pedestal and it looks like as though hari brahma and other gods are put down by shankaracharya is that so so here what it is shankaracharya telling is when there is ekagrate the way of passing on the path is they make us become purely concentrated in that one path so if i am handling hari i will keep on going towards hari devi i will keep on going in that path so we also see many of the compositions like purandara dasaru his ishta daiva is vithala but it doesn't mean that he has not composed any other songs on other deities he has he has brought out all good points about different deities when he is composing those songs on those deities but at the end he puts the sentence vithala is the utmost please show me the path to go to that vithala or if you take tyagaraja swami 
he has also composed on different deities but his ishta daiva is rama at the end somehow or the other he connects to rama and he praises rama and he says i am ramadasa so it means what this is a process in which it is giving us a chance to focus on the one path which we want to go proceed further so they use bhakti as the fence for example when we are putting a tree when it is a sapling plant and little more stronger we have the fence to protect that tree so in the same way bhakti is used as the fence once the tree grows big it says i don't need the fence i can defend myself defense so like that bhakti is needed for one to grow in that path as we grow bhakti becomes intense and it gives way for gyana what is that gyana the liking to have that shiva 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 one wants to know more about shiva one wants to experience shiva so bhakti has given rise to that gyana automatically it is like this if you ask a baby to walk or to run even though it doesn't know how to stand up or balance and it doesn't know how to walk if you ask that baby to run will it run no it needs the support of the parents who can hold the hands and make it balance and then it walks one by one step and no one teaches it how to run it runs on its own when there is something happening which it likes it runs towards that no one teaches running it runs on its own in the same way one who has put the effort towards uh knowing shiva reading about shiva doing puja about shiva that would lead that person to develop bhakti it is like walking so once that walking becomes stable bhakti becomes stable naturally the child called bhakta he runs on his own towards experiencing the shiva which comes through the gyana from within it starts revealing what the shiva is he wants to experience so for a bhakta to reach to that level one has to have concentrated ekagra chitta bhakti for that it is helpful if we concentrate on one god and shankaracharya being a realized person he has come to the level where he is directly saying there are thousands of devatas who are readily giving the worldly phalas which are good enough for this world but i want shiva your blessings through your feet for which i want to do 
the puja worship. So. <clears throat> स्मृत शास्त्रे वैद्य शकुन कविता पुराणे मंत्रे वुति नटन हास्यचतुर कथम राज्ञा प्रीतिर्भवति मयि को हम पशुपते पशुमां सर्वज्ञ प्रथित कृपया पालय विभो इन दिस शंकराचार्य इज टेलिंग स्मृति श्रुति which are again the vedas <coughs> smriti shruti uh, shastra shastra is different sciences vaidye that is in medicine shakuna augury are uh, telling foretelling the future or connecting the two incidents kavita in poetry gana in singing bhanitao in oration oratory skills purane in telling the stories of the puranas mantre in the science of mantra va or stuti in praying praising through stotras natana in acting or dancing hasyeshu in the skill of comedy achaturah i am not at all skilled katham ragyam preetir bhavati mai how can the king be pleased with me to reward me with something ko hum pashupati who am i without all this skills in different different things not even one i have why will the dragnya the king be pleased with me pashu mam after all i am an animal sarvagnya prathita you are sarvagnya all knowledgeable one you are and prathita and you are famous your glories are far reaching prathita kripaya palaya please protect me because you are pashupati o vibho one who has pervaded everything <laughs> so these are all the different sciences which are highly recognized in the society in the human race in this world so to lead a pleasurable with good status good wealth good societal status one has to have something or the other skills to attract the king here ragnya also represents the person who is in power who can give us some reward so i am not good at any of this i am pashu i am an animal because i don't know any of these things and you are pashupati o oh, shiva o oh, vibho one who pervades everything and you are sarvagnya you know everything so you know me also in that case please 
कृपया विद कंपैशन प्रोटेक्ट मी सो व्हाट कैन वी अंडरस्टैंड बाय दिस वन इज all the secular knowledge skills what we acquire is good enough to have good status and wealth and make good living in this world for that we have to have <clears throat> sharp intelligence skill straight smart skill as well it is needed to live in this world happily however a person who has gone into another dimension understanding whatever i am doing for the whole life of mine with secular knowledge secular knowledge secular knowledge i am only getting the wealth status and happiness and pleasures in this life is that all is that the end of everything when that question comes he thinks further and realizes there is something else higher so when he goes in that path with concentration with passion with love when he travels in that it turns out as bhakti with that bhakti towards shiva he has gone away from this worldly sciences the secular knowledge he is no more interested in it and because of that he has given up all so in the eyes of the people around in the society i look like a pashu for them because i don't know anything i am not identified as even a human being because i am a pashu in the eyes of them all of them not only that i know i am a pashu pashabadh as long as i'm having this body and mind i am bound for something or the other i am bound you are that pashupati and because you are sarvagnya and vibho you have entered me also you know me also so please with compassion protect me in whatever way i see i seem to be pashu so when i am standing in front of shiva the very source of everything the consciousness i feel nothing but a bound person pashu Purandara Dasru has a composed one Devaranama it keeps coming to me again and again in so many ways Arupadu kiraraiya harige ninnanu nambi toru ee jagadonage obbaranu kaanena He says who is able to live aru badukidaraya o hari have believing you having faith in you please show me in this world i can't see even a single person you know the deeper meaning in this once i start believing having faith in hari it is shiva also i can't make my living or life in this worldly society 
because I have given up everything. All the time my mind is on Shiva, Shiva, Shiva. Hari, Hari, Hari. So who is living with pleasures of world when I have so much of faith in you? So this shloka is also resonating the same idea. Pashu, when we think of Pashu, the bull ox is made, it is tied up to the pole in the center and it is made to go round and round and round to squeeze the oil. Like that, being Pashu, I'm going from birth to death to birth to death in cycles. You are the only one who can take me out of that endless cycling in birth and death. And you are the only one who can give me that joy of blissful consciousness because you are the Shivananda. You have to show the compassion on me. So this is extreme bhakti where he is just surrendering to Shiva. Ghato va mrut pindo pyanu ravija dhumo agni rajalah pato va tantur va pariharati kim ghorashamanam vrutha kandhak shobham vahasitarasatar kavajasam Padam bhojam shambhor bhajan paramasaukhyam rajasudhi. Sudhi he, one who is sharp in intellect, an intelligent person who can think, 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 analyze, discriminate. One who is using the intellect to the utmost is Sudhi. Shankaracharya is telling, Oh Sudhi, one who is so intelligent, be it the pot or mud or anu, the atom, be it the smoke or be it the agni, the fire on the top of the mountain. Achala is mountain, on top of the mountain. Be it the cloth or the thread. Pariharati kim ghorashabhanam. Talking about it or debating about it. Is it going to take away the pain of yama, the death? Vritha kanthakshobham vasi. Tarasa tarka vachasa. Vritha unnecessarily kanthakshobham. You are only spoiling your voice, energy. Your throat will start paining. You are going through that. Tarasa tarka vachasa. With doing the debate so much. Continuously, you are doing nothing but contact shobhana. You are unnecessarily wasting your energy, going through the pain of arguing, debating about something which is connected with analytical mind, analytical intellect, and it is limited to this world. Debate, 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 debate. Tarka Shastra is that. One who is deep into Tarka Shastra. Tarka Vachasa. 
when we are doing the debate through analogy, dialectics, logic, reasoning, assuming and then proposing that. These are all the things which is used to analyze things which are there and taking that as the analogy to argue and prove that that is Atma, that is Ishwara, that is Jeevatma. What is the use of all these things? You are wasting your effort. Instead, Padam Bhojam Shambho Bhaja You meditate, contemplate, worship the feet of the lotus feet of Padam Bhojam lotus like feet of Shambho one who is always auspicious readily giving the highest reward Parama Saukhyam Vraja and experience that Parama Saukhya, the supreme happiness. Again, here Shankaracharya is telling how one should go step by step, step by step. When a person all of a sudden jumps into Vedanta or Tarka Shastra, they get into the pit of intellectual debating and they will have to stumble in every step. Instead of that, instead of the Tarka Shastra, get into Karma and then Bhakti and then Jnana, which goes step by step. Like I said, uh, <clears throat> baby, when it walks, it has to learn balancing itself while standing. And then it will start walking step after step. Once it has this steady walk under its control, on its own it runs. That is the safest way of growing. In the same way, one has to put the effort towards worshipping Shiva and then progress automatically, gradually, naturally as a reflex action. Bhakti will come. What is that bhakti? Because I am doing the worship of Shiva my mind is focusing on that. Slowly it is loving Shiva. So that oneness with Shiva is becoming more and more loving to me because of which my mind is automatically running towards that. That concentrated love towards Shiva is leading me towards experiencing Shiva through the revelations which I get. So it's a gradual path which one has to follow. And he is giving us that. This Tarka Shastra is like when a person is dead tired while he is climbing the hill under the hand. He is fainting. If a person goes and holds that kalkand, uh, the sugar cube, kalsakre, in his hand and keeps telling what the kalkand is, how it looks, what is the shape of it, what is the color of it, how it tastes, what will happen if he has it in his mouth how it melts and how it goes inside. He, keep, he keeps on telling about it. 
is it doing any good to the person who is fainting, being so tired, thirsty? Instead of that, the minute one sees that person fainting, just put that cube of uh, sugar in his mouth. He himself will understand what the shape is, what the taste is, when it goes through the throat, how it cools down, how he is getting the energy as he is sucking more and more of the sugar cube and he wakes up and starts climbing again. There was no need for even a word. It is experiential knowledge which that person is getting on his own because of that Kalkandu being given directly. That Kalkandu being given directly is that Bhakti. That is what Bhakti does without a word. Bhakti takes care of it in such a beautiful way. So, Tarka is of no use. It is useful to understand, but one should not get totally sucked into it and say that is the end of knowing something, end of knowledge. That is not knowledge. Manaste Padabji Nivasatu Vaja Stotra Pranitam Karo Jabhyarchaya Shruti Rabi Kathakar Nanavidho Tavadhyane Buddhir Nayana Yugalam Murti Vibhave Paragranthan Kairvam Paramashiva Jane Paramataha. So here Shankaracharya is giving the clear picture. When Bhakti intensifies, a devotee wants to perceive everything through all the five senses, through all karmendriyas, that Shiva, Shiva, Shiva. And that is the experience one wants when the bhakti becomes intense. Manaste Padabje. Let my mind nivasatu let it reside, let it settle down, nivasatu, on padabje, on the lotus feet of yours. That lotus feet is beautiful. At the same time, it is oozing with nectar. That nectar is consciousness. And Shiva, he is letting it out through his feet. Padabja. Let me get into that. Nivasatu. Vaja stotra panitav. Let my words become the stotras on you. That means every conversation should be Resonating Shiva may not be the words, but it should be resonating that Shiva. Just like Shankaracharya, through his poetry, every word is connected with Shiva. Like that, Vacha, my talk itself should become Stotra Panitao. Karau Chabhyachayam. And my hands should be busy doing the archana at your feet. Shruti Rapi Katha Karna Na Vidhav. And my ears should be always listening about you, about your glories, about the stories of your glories. 
tava dhyane buddhi and my buddhi that intellect let it be busy with contemplating on you becoming silent on you dhyana let it become one with you buddhi nayana yugalam murtir vibhave let my eyes be filled with the glorious beautiful form of yours paragranthan kairva paramashiva jane paramatah when all my senses are filled with shiva paramashiva with which other organ can i study about other scriptures who are not talking about the paramashiva here paragranthan means that which is not talking about shiva which is not connected with paramashiva that paramashiva is pure consciousness the brahman what is the use of studying paragrantha which is not talking about which is not telling me about paramashiva so this is a very important shloka to contemplate and to follow so so let us see now ivata <clears> bhattatiri <throat> in his narayaniyam he could not move around at all someone had to lift him up and take him to the temple to that extent he was totally disabled so he puts out pours out his inner emotion vidhuya kleshan me kuru charana yugmam dhrutarasam o guru ayurappan remove all my afflictions and make my charana yugmam both feet strong enough so that i can enter the temple i can do offer the flowers at your feet i can smell the fragrance of tulsi and i can see the beautiful form of yours please take away all my afflictions make me perfect so that i can come to the temple itself so like that one who has gone through the experience of bhakti they are filled with the desire to fill their daily routine to be in touch with the shiva in all possible ways japo jalpa shilpam takalam api mudra virachana that we studied in saundarya lahari so when we follow this shloka apply it to our daily routine whatever we are doing when we do it as an offer worship to shiva just leading the life itself will become worship of shiva that he has brought out so beautiful manaste padabje nivasatu and also see shankaracharya is using again and again almost in his all compositions lotus feet lotus feet even in uh, vishnu shatpadi he makes himself as shatpadi the bee with six feet that is five senses and mind when that lotus feet padabja is available what does it do nivasatu the chatpadi the bee enters the lotus flower in the morning and the lotus feet is giving lots and lots of nectar and it is keep on drinking 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 and it gets intoxicated and it goes into sleep 
and because it is evening as the sun sets the lotus closes with the b inside so like that manaste padabje nivasatu let me stay reside in your lotus feet let my mind be filled with your feet and vacha stotra phanito in spiritual path if one has to progress silence utter silence is given high prominence not only the mouth even the thoughts the mind should be silenced even the intellect should be silenced when everything is silenced the whole being becomes relaxed which will make the consciousness to work and project itself so to attain that silence the way is to do the japa concentrating on one stotra as japa so if we make that shiva or connected uh shloka stotra as mantra as we keep chanting it in our inner mind hands and legs and eyes all of the things will be doing its normal work but the thought process and the result of that process thoughts also will turn out as shiva 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 so the whole perception in that bhakta becomes shiva maya so vacha stotra phanito that's the way one goes progresses in spiritual path shruti rapi katha karnana vidhav let my ears listen hear listen hear listen listening is very very important and that is the reason even in navavida bhakti shravana is put first when what is heard and what is listened carefully with both mind intellect as well as the heart involved in listening directly goes and seeps deep into antakarana and it becomes part of us so shravana shruti only then comes smriti isn't it so shravana is very very important and it makes one go into shiva bhakti to say about this once there was a debate between a pandita and uh, ramakrishna paramahansa like a tarka shastra pandita he was debating and trying to prove that there is no god at all atheist paramahansa listened to it with so much of patience and he enjoyed listening to him and finally he said how beautifully you put forth your argument that itself shows there is god on your tongue and there is god in your intellect there is god in your mind to come and stand here to put forth your argument how lovely it is see that is the sign of a real bhakta ramakrishna paramahansa <laughs> once we start filling the mind with that supreme 
the mind, heart, and the intellect knows how to take whatever falls on the ears in a very positive way. Shruti Rapi Katha Karnana Vidhav. So let my ears be filled with Shiva. That means I should be able to see Shivatva. The presence of Shivatva in all the words which I hear. Tava Dhyane Buddhi. So mind vacillates. Buddhi is the one which is capable of controlling this lower mind which is readily going towards the worldly pleasures, the objects of the senses. Buddhi is the one which can make it come and go towards the upper mind, that is higher self and the lower self. Buddhi is the one which is capable of churning out the wisdom. If that buddhi is well equipped with Shiva Dhyana, naturally it is able to take this lower self that is false eye also towards the Paramashiva, the higher self. And buddhi has eight attributes. This is also very interesting. It has eight attributes, which are the Sushrusha. That is, because of previous Punya, one has the intense desire to know. That intense desire is Sushrusha. And then Shravana, listening with care. That's also part of the intellect. Grahanam. Understanding, perceiving, dharanam, internalizing it and keeping it in the memory. And then uha, deliberating or inferring. Many of the things we come to know through guessing, through inference, to deliberating. That is uha. Apoha. Dropping or giving up something which is not useful for us. That also buddhi does. And artha vijnanam, analyzing, uh, making classification or grouping it, that is also done by intellect. So, with this intellect, Highly concentrating on Shiva through Dhyana. Imagine what all one can turn out in the process of moving towards Shiva. So, Shankaracharya in Saundai Lahari, beautifully he guides us to become one with the very source of pure energy, which is Mahatri Prasandari Lalitamba. In this Shivananda Lahari, he is guiding us and taking us towards Paramashiva. Paramashiva. So, how fortunate we are all to put our mind to study this. It is nothing but the grace of Shiva and Shankaracharya. Mm -hmm. Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti, Shiva Shakti. Shiva Shakti, 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 
ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿ 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 ಓ 